Hi dear ho interwebs, I'm the one like Dave. And I'm known far and wide as Jacob. Yes, and today, just like James Cameron, we're going to be sinking below the surface and delving into the depths of the finest graphics cards around. Just like James Cameron. Yeah. We're breaking open AMD and Nvidia's top graphics cards to see what lies beneath them, and likely your graphics cards too. First we ought to take the time to recommend you don't do this yourselves. Of course if you're careful and put everything back properly and don't find yourself with a bunch of spare tiny screws then you're probably not going to break anything except your warranty. But you're also probably not going to achieve anything that positive either except for maybe temporarily sating your curiosity and that desire to live on the edge. Basically don't blame us if you decide to perform open card surgery and it never wakes up from the anaesthetic. But if you are interested in what lies beneath your pixel pusher, then allow us to help and guide you through what lies under the hood of your latest graphics card. The RX Vega 64 is AMD's latest high-end graphics card, but not one without a few problems. The launch was seemingly delayed, there were few available for release, and prices skyrocketed since they first launched. But it is an interesting new architecture. It's sporting 8GB of 2nd gen high bandwidth memory and 4096 GCN cores spread across its 64 NCUs, hence the Vega 64 name. There will also potentially be more mainstream products coming potentially next year, which are sporting GDDR6 or 5 instead of the HBM2, which we is kind of see. interesting. Yeah. It's aimed more at modern, close to the metal APIs, and that means the performance is looking a bit more positive now since Vega's launch. But we've already unboxed and reviewed the Vega 64, so now it's time to denude it. First we need to remove the backplate from the card to reveal the PCB or printed circuit board. Ooh. This gives you a good view of the GPU tag LEDs and the switches to change them from red to blue, which highlight the GPU's current load. Now we can get the shroud off the top of the card. Here you can see the LEDs that give the Radeon its lovely red glow, and you can also see the Vega's vapour chamber cooling block, and the blower fan which forces air over the aluminium fins on top of the copper base plate. Let's get that out of the way so we can see the actual GPU itself. So there it is, the full pared down RX Vega 64. You can see underneath that cooler the thermal goop that AMD have used to cool not only the ch GPU itself, but the HBM2 memory that is also on the chip. Yes, and if we wipe it off you can get a better look at the shiny new GPU. Ooh. There are also thermal pads on the base plate to help conduct heat away from the toasty fets and inductors on the board. Traditionally this is where the memory modules for a graphics card are situated, but because Vega packs all of that onto the GPU, this is where AMD have jammed in all the necessary power componentry. You can see that otherwise it's a very sparse layout, with much of the right hand side of the PCB sporting very few components. Having a small form factor RX Vega should be a simple matter, but as yet we've still only seen the nano in the hands of Tim Sweeney. With the cooler out of the way, you can also see the BIOS switch clearly and the two 8 pin PCIe connectors too. But it's that big old GPU with its built in memory that's the really interesting part of this package. So now let's take a look at the cream of Nvidia's gaming crop, the GTX 1080 Ti. Now this is the top GeForce GPU of today, with Pascal still holding court while we wait for the server-based Volta Tech to trickle down to our desktops next year. The Pascal GP102 GPU at its heart runs on the slightly chunkier 16 nanometer lithography rather than RX Vega's 14 nanometer. It packs in 3584 cooler cores compared to the slightly more uh, 3840 that you find in the full Titan XP. Yes, it's super powerful and probably about the first graphics card that was actually capable of serious 4K gaming. So let's rip it apart and see what it's made of. Again, we're removing the back plate first and immediately you can see it's a lot more densely packed with teeny tiny tech things than the Vega card. You can also see where the memory is taking up space on the board, which Vega didn't need. With our trusty screwdriver, we can get the shroud open and get a better look at the aluminium vapor chamber design and video views for the GTX 1080 Ti Founders Edition. Looks a lot like AMD's, right? The rest of the shroud comes off easily, exposing both the radial blower fan and the green LED to illuminate the GeForce logo. And we know which one of those is the most important for true gaming power, right? From the back we can remove the vapour chamber itself and reveal da, da, da. the GPU sitting underneath. What's this, a Radeon GPU sitting below the chiller? Have they been doing unholy deals with both Intel and Nvidia? Nah, we're just playing. This right here is the big old GP102 GPU, hidden under that layer of thermal grot. Now we need to remove the rigid frame to reveal the bare PCB. Again you can see how much more packed the board is than AMD, most obviously where the memory lies. You can also see where the board differs from the Titan X design with a single memory module lopped off. There are 11 1GB modules on the board as opposed to the 12 used in the Titan X. 
here's all the complex power components right here. So that's the capacitors, the inductors and the MOSFETs, and they're all designed to deliver the juice while maintaining low temperatures too. So these are the two big boy graphics cards from AMD and Nvidia respectively. And you can immediately see the different routes to market that the two companies have taken with their cards. The GTX 1080 Ti is every inch the traditional monstrous Nvidia graphics card, all barely restrained power and serious performance. But as crammed as the board is, it almost feels like we're at the very limits of what Nvidia can do at this level without some more serious redesigns. The AMD Vega 64 on the other hand looks instantly like a new take on graphics technology. Folding the memory into the chip and shifting the power components around the GPU give the PCB a minimalist aesthetic, and visually at least makes it look like the platform has room to grow. Whatever the looks however, the admittedly more expensive GTX 1080 Ti still has the performance where it counts, and the Vega card, well, not so much. Even against the GTX 1080 Ti's smaller sibling, the GTX 1080, uh, the Radeon still struggles. But now then, brute force still holds sway. So that's what's lurking under our graphics card, so hopefully now you don't feel the need to tear yours apart to see what makes it tick. You're welcome. Okay, so if you like what you've seen and heard, give us the old YouTube love and check back here and on the website for more PC gaming good times and hardware fun. Bye. See you later.